Hello, the Darkness344 here, and in today's video, I'll be showing off this ALU that I've designed. So this is a vertical ALU, as you can see, and I've set up this little demo to show basically how fast it is. Um, well, I guess the throughput, if you want to put a word, uh, a term to it. So, um, so just some basic specs. This ALU uh, utilizes carry cancel adders uh, to make it very fast, and it's um, well, seven ticks, seven redstone ticks of latency. So, um, from an input, it'll take seven ticks to get an output, um, and it's um, three tick pipelineable. So, as you can see, you can put a number in every three redstone ticks, and it will be able to calculate a result without um, breaking or anything. So, there's only a few things that I've left out on this ALU compared to, um, I guess, a fully fledged one. And that's pretty much all just uh, the different shifting, rotating, and all of that. And that's because um, I've decided to kind of um, use that as a put, make a separate module for that, um, to as to not slow it down. The main reason I'm doing that is because this ALU is I basically designed it for um, a new computer that I'm going to be working on, um, which hopefully will be semi decent. And that basically means that well, I want I will I'd really like a one Hertz clock on this computer um, and seeing as the ALU has uh, seven redstone ticks of latency plus some additional redstone ticks um, just from like busing and stuff um, it means that um, it's probably better to do the all the shifting and bit rotating and stuff uh, handled by a completely separate unit um, that can be run in parallel with the ALU and well, use the same inputs and outputs for the ALU, it'll just make things a bit easier. So first of all, what are the main functions that this ALU can do? And, um, well, we'll get to the demo in a minute. So, I haven't got all of them listed here, but um, we can do, we can add, we can subtract, we can invert, um, we can also do all your boolean um, logic, so you can AND or uh, exclusive or, uh, NAND, NOR, and uh, not exclusive or I guess, I, I don't know. And all of these, the, the rotate and bit shifting, will be on a different thing. Technically you can do a left uh, logical shift, um, just by putting the same number in twice. Um, however, um, I'll probably handle that by a separate unit anyway, it'll, it'll just be easier. So the, the one thing this ALU is missing, apart from the rotating and stuff, is implies and not implies. Um, but um, that ugh, I, I've never actually ever seen a use for the imply boolean operator. Um, I bet a lot of you don't even know it exists. Um, but um, the Wikipedia page is like three lines, so I, I I just don't ever think it's actually useful. And well, it'll just take one extra clock cycle to do it anyway, because all you need to do is an invert, then an or. You might need to do a nor actually. I, I can't remember too much. I, I don't think it's that useful actually. So yeah, over here I've just got a basic setup for the addition anyway. And what we have is eight numbers. And so the, these are just random numbers I picked. So 4, 5, 7, 24, 72, 47, 32, and 12. And on the other side we have another eight numbers. So 5, 3, 11, 68, 33, 96, 62, and 5. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to add this number with this number and, and we're going to do this number with this number, etc. So 4 will be added to 5, um, 3 will be added to 5, 7 will be added to 11, etc. And then we'll get our results out here. So this basically just demonstrates the 3 tick um, throughput of this ALU. So we just click this button over here and we'll send the data in. And as you can see, we get the data out here. So I've used some repeater locks just so we can actually save the data and view the results. And so 4 plus 5 is 9, which, um, well, what do you know? It's over here, it's shown over here, because that's an 8 and that's a 1, which is a 9. Then the next one would be 5 plus 3, yes it was, which was an 8. Then it was a 7 plus 11, which is 18, which is what this is. So you, you basically get the idea, it works fairly well, and it's fairly fast as well. 
Then, of course, you can do all your other Boolean operators just by using a combination of the different um, lines and stuff. So you can um, and the numbers just by clicking this one. Then you also have to um, disable the adders like this um, so they don't also output. Then you can do um, uh, XOR by, I think it was this line over here does XOR. So there we go. And then the way I did OR was I just, what you have to do is turn XOR line on as well as the AND line on. And the reason why that works is because if we go over here, um, it was it was easier to fit in and I'll show you in a minute. But say we have two inputs, we have input A and input B. And um, say the glass block represents a zero and the concrete block represents a one. So it'll go zero, one, zero, one on the A and zero, zero, one, one. And this is basically all the possible combinations for A and B. Then what we can do is if we OR these, um, we get 0, 1, 1, 1 for these combinations. But then if you AND these two numbers, you you will get 0, 0, 0, 1. And if you XOR it, you'll get 0, 1, 1, 0. Well, if you look at the OR column, um, it's kind of similar to XOR uh, and the OR, because if you AND, I mean, if, if you OR the AND and the XOR, you will get a OR of A and B. And, well, yeah, you could just just OR A and B instead of going through AND OR XOR. However, it's it's just faster to do it this way, because if, if we go back to the ARU and take a look at the way the wiring works, um, it'd just be a bit more complex, because... So these are our inputs, and to OR it, well, we basically just... Seeing as in Redstone... This is literally an OR gate, you just connect them together and that's your output. You don't need any like fancy transistors or anything, This it just works because it's um, digital signal instead of um, actual like volts or anything. Um, it'll just work, so you can, you can just take the output from there. However, um, there's not really actually much space in this design. And while yes, I could just take that signal and bring it around all the way around here into here, over here which is the output to the inverter and actually goes out. Um, that would just be a bit space inefficient. And the XOR line is here, as well as the... Actually, no, the XOR line is here. That's, that's not even it. The XOR line is here, and the AND line is here. So, well, yes, the OR line would probably, like... Oops, far work. Uh, would come around here. Well, you might as well just OR the two... Uh, the, the AND as well as the XOR because you can just OR them right here and it, it just makes the design a bit simpler and more compact. So down over here we have a, a a horrible amalgamation of wires but all this does is invert the final output of the ALU and this is so you can get the inverse boolean logic. So yes you can do OR and OR no, so you can do OR this line provides OR, XOR, as well as AND. However, if you want to get the inverse of these, well, all you have to do is just invert the output. So you just invert this line. And that can be done with this circuit right here. And the reason I set it up with this is because of um, just timing, really. Uh, this allows it to be a one tick invert instead of um, a two or three tick. And the reason that is, is because um, this carry cancel adder um, outputs a, a really low signal strength, so I'd need to repeat it anyway. So instead of repeating it, then going into an inverter circuit, um, a toggleable inverter circuit, um, I don't repeat it at all because it can go straight into the inverter circuit, um, reducing the time down by one tick, making this entire uh, data loop um, only seven ticks, which is pretty fast. I mean, of course, there are faster, but it's, it's fairly fast for its size and uh, it, it just works fairly well. So that does mean the design of this um, of this um, toggleable inverter has two different lines um, and in, in an ideal world you'd only use one bus and it'd be connected to both however it, it just size constraints may not have to fit it like this. 
um, what you do is you just connect um, this one to this one and then just invert it like that and and that should just work but um, yeah so so you can toggle the invert on or off um, let's just get a lever like this and then as we can see we get the inverted um, of course we have to toggle this one on so there we go and we get whatever over here the inverted state out here and then if we don't want that we toggle this one off and toggle this one on and then we get the uh, regular state and then if we um, don't want any output at all we can just toggle this one on and then as you can see there will be no output it will just output all zeros even if we have data in here so just an extra handy feature that we can have so the way i designed this aolu was i based it around a carry cancel adder so this carry cancel adder is by don from the or server and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's by don i i found it on a youtube video by 75rx where it was just a tutorial and this was the original design and what i've done is it's, it's a free tick carry cancel adder so um pipeline number at free ticks of course and I've basically just done a few modifications to turn it into an ALU. And there are quite ser quite a few modifications just to make it um, work, but it's, it's a pretty good design actually. And it's, it was actually fairly easy to turn into an ALU um, compared to a lot of other designs I've seen. Um, because, well, you can take the XOR straight out of the one XOR gate uh, very easily just by using repeaters and it does um, for syncing purposes of course um, I had to remove the torches that were here and replace them with a repeater and then put the torch um, down here instead uh, but it works uh, just as well then I'm not sure there was actually many other changes um, to it. it it just works fairly well and um, yes yeah, it's, it's a fairly decent design of course it also has a carry in down here and a carry out at the top so it's it's a fully functioning ALU if you ignore the fact that it can't do um, shifts or rotates or any of that but that can always be added fairly simply it probably wouldn't even take that much space either so yeah I'm, I'm fairly happy with this ALU and I'll leave a world download in the description if you want to try and use it and I may do a tutorial on this in the future it's kind of complex though so um, yeah I I don't actually know if that will be possible. Um, I might. What I might do is do a um, tutorial on stacking first, then do a tutorial on this ALU and um, with stacking as well, because I'm, I'm not really sure it's possible to build by hand, at least that easily. So yeah, I hope you like this video. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe, and I'm out.